all who are tuning in. I am the host that goes by the name of James Hatcher. Thank you for joining me in this radio special episode entitled Food for Thought, aired on WPPM LP 106.5 FM Philadelphia, as well as broadcast and televised on the cable networks of Comcast Xfinity, Channel 66, 966, Verizon Files, Channel 29, 30, Roku, as well as Direct TV. You can also listen to the online live streaming and watch the episode of Food for Thought by going on the Philly Cam's website, which is www.phillycam.org. This radio special gives an opportunity in which individuals discuss how their personal ideas, talents, and aspirations are shared among the collectives in order to have a beneficial impact and to enhance self-worth through awareness. In respect to Philly Cam, Philly Cam consists of a coordination of creative individuals who are compelled to express their perspective and appreciation of them to the world through media. Joining me will be a uh, performing and recording artist known as Esco Main, who's here to share his exceptional qualities of music as well as his experiences of interacting with others who are interested. So in this episode of Food for Thought, the theme of the topic is creating and signifying a specific message through accomplishing an endeavor for the purpose of receiving a responsive impression through influence. Wow. Upon recognition of one's intention to be a benefit to a circumstance with the potential of others to be included, the consideration of how the individual may present an opportunity to produce a product possessing a descriptive message that the receptive can utilize as a resource to build upon may be rudimentary until recognized. The receptive registers the description of what is presented and corresponds it as an establishment already constructed and which they may already be a part of. This establishment that is occupied by the initiator does have indicated that the environment can use a service of provision. The initial impression that an outcome of creating something out of an intention further emphasizes emphasizes the capability of one to further its progression of abilities and may compel the individual to make the production recognizable by another individual, thus to cause an attraction of interest into what is presented. The response within the interest is determined by the message that is projected. This is the food for thought, which is the saying we use and is allegorical in nature. So now we will play a musical performance and then introduce the special guest. Chill in the eye. 
now we are back uh, once again. This is James Hatcher, and you're listening to Food for Thought on WPPM LP 106.5. And we just uh, heard the song called The Storm. Uh, and accompanying us is Mr. X. Comain, uh, the performing artist. How you doing, X. Comain? All right, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. All right. And... Um, Tell us, are you a Philadelphia native, or where are you originally from? I was born and raised in Philadelphia. Okay. Um, Southwest Philadelphia. Okay. And you have a very interesting name. Can you tell the listeners um, how that name ca- came about? Okay. Well, interesting question. Um, ex Maine, that name was actually, I believe, to be divinely given, you know. So it's a name that kind of just jumped into my head, and... The reason I'm using it for marketing is because of the uh, the little, I guess, the sound of the name. You know, it's kind of more suitable to the music. It's a little kind of out of the box, a little bit different, but it just kind of jumped into my head. Okay. It works a little better than my birth name, you know. So, so ex Maine actually means strong spirit. Okay. So ex Maine is the name of the spirit before it has been influenced by life. You know, babies are born happy. Okay. Some of them grow up ex murderers. Some of them grow up musicians and artists. So ex Maine is the name of the self before the influences of life. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So is that name derived from um, a spiritual influence that you uh, came across through maybe some spiritual reading, uh, a- any type of spiritual background, tradition? Or anything like religion or something like that that you got the word, or it just came by intuition, and you just decided that you was gonna, you know, put the letters to get together, mm-hmm. and you just, um, you know, got that, um, that, um, what you call it, the uh, premonition or, um, like the intuition mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to put it together. The name actually, during a rehearsal, jumped into my head. Okay. It was as if there was another channel in my mind. So okay. it just kind of jumped into my head. And I'm wondering the whole time, you know, what is ex So, you know, I started looking into it. Right. You know, so it's a name that just really visited me. But uh, koa is a wood, a rare wood found in Hawaii. Okay. A little less dense than, than maple. Okay. Okay. And koa... In researching woods to have a guitar design, this is a couple of years before the name ex Maine visited me. So I realized that Koa was the choice wood. So right. interestingly enough, the name that pops in is Koa Maine. But the main part of the name is representing is a representation of the spirit. Just the way okay. a lion's mane covers his body, our spirits cover us in its presence. Right. Yeah. And I, I so, feel like, you know, uh, just with that name, that's mm-hmm. a very rare name. So rare mm-hmm. that I... I never heard it before until I met you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you have every justifiable right to give mm-hmm. the significant meaning to that name. Yeah. Okay, so um, according to, like, the your music, mm-hmm. in regards to your music, uh, what category uh, do you title the genre of music that you play? Well, that's interesting. Um, it's hard for me to really say what genre, but I could say which genres it kind of umbrellas itself under. Okay. So there's elements of pop, rock, soul. Okay. Now, I've also played classical jazz and, you know, experimental music, fusion, and different types of music. So it kind of fits under that umbrella. So usually when people ask me, I usually tell them, well, it's, it's pop, rock, and soul because right. it's a very... You know, it's an answer everybody can kind of relate to. Okay. You know, but it does have the elements of pop, rock, and soul. Uh, just for the simple fact, there's, you know, a simplicity to it to a degree. Uh, there's a strong melodic sense, you know, and sometimes I'll write lyrically. Right. Uh, uh, not in a technical way, just sometimes to paint colorful images in people's minds with the words. Okay. And sometimes, it, you know, so I, I really do call it pop, rock, and soul. You know, and some artists don't like uh, labels, but myself... I feel that labels help us to better verbalize right. what we're trying to express on the inside. Right. You know, so I would say pop, rock, and soul with elements of Middle Eastern classical jazz. Okay. So is there any specific um, background of those different genres that uh, influence you to decide to uh, say, yeah, this is the type of music that uh, I would like to play, or is it just natural to you to just, you know, 
mm-hmm. play it. I mean, have, did you was you inclined to those sounds of the different genres that you play before you actually like realize that it is a genre mm-hmm. from other artists. Mm-hmm. Like you started playing like, you know, the pop and then you heard like a, a pop artist and you're like, dang, my, my sound sound just like that. So that's what mm-hmm. type of genre that I could define this type of style okay. of music. All right. All right. And you know, um, interesting question. Well, here's how I would say it. The actual x main sound. Now, going back to our influences or my influences or the influences that I'm combining together to get the sound right if you'll notice with every sound there is a i would say an undefined almost ethereal type of a tone that goes along that underlines everything right you know i guess in my view that would be me without the influences and that one sound kind of lingers and strings through the other tunes okay so uh tones would be let's say let's say if i wanted to some of it would be abstract okay which which we don't necessarily have abstract uh, expressions in any of the genres i mentioned some would be quite ethereal if we should say you know really dissonant chords not typically used right so that's the underlying element that paints through everything and it kind of masks right. the uh the different genres that are intertwined into the sound okay mm-hmm. all right so how significant is it for you to be consciously aware of the possible effect that your music may have on any individual that may hear it. Okay, it is very important for me, 100% important to uh, be conscious of every word, every step, every direction, okay? Because music can be misconveyed. I could express something and mean it in a positive way and one person may misconstrue it and then forever, that's my stigma. That's my stigma. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So it's, yeah, it's, it's very important and I'm very intentional and specific about the way I say things. Of course, the type of person that I am, it doesn't matter what people think if it isn't good, but however, my intentions are good. But with that said, I do consider strongly what people think of the music, how it influences them, how it inflects them, how it affects them. This is why I don't express frustration or angst or negativity through the music because Negativity and angst and frustration never pulls anybody. It never feels inviting. Okay, so Mm -hmm. being that you're able to express, you know, the message Mm -hmm. of, like, you know, the way you may perceive Mm -hmm. um, your um, perspective on how you relate to the community or to the world that you involved yourself in, and using that music, Mm -hmm. your music as an expression to reach other individuals. So do you you feel that the message that you put out is part of your responsibility of leaving um, an impression on them? Because, you know, you may feel that, um, you know, in your words of music, Mm -hmm. this is what is needed in order to, you know, help them with uh, a certain um, perspective Mm -hmm. of their dealing. Mm -hmm. or their situation, or the way they view life. So do you feel like that's part of your responsibility? It is 100% a part of my responsibility. Uh, It's something I don't choose to do. I never go in with the intention. I'm going to write something inspirational so that people will be lifted up. I always go in with the mindset of this is what I have to express. Right. And this is what I have to express. And and I'll express it my way. Right. And I'm anxious and eager to get it out. However, I believe I am here to uplift people in certain ways and okay. those ways manifest themselves without me trying just like influences i don't try to sound like this or that but there are things around that with similar tones and melodies all over you know so yes okay mm-hmm. so uh speaking of melodies um i think we can get into another uh track that's you know mm-hmm. that's um and you know the influence and the message so what song would you like? I'm going to give you, you know, mm-hmm. um, the the honor of introducing your next song. Um, okay. All right. So, well, this, this song here is called Vagabond. Okay. And what's the significance of the Vagabond? Vagabond. Well, Vagabond is a story about a person who is homeless on the streets, desolate. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. You know, and it, 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 it came to mind just a series of events over the years, you know, myself being a child seeing homeless people and, you know, we're going home and, uh, you know, we'd give a homeless person money, but you know what? It's still raining. He's still cold. He's still hungry. And he's still going to have to face this for the rest of his life. So I put myself in their shoes. So okay. Vagabond is a song where I put myself in the shoes of the desolate. You know, so the lyrics are just kind of ex uh, saying, I would want someone to take me home so I can do the things I used to do when I was a child. Wow. Rather than just give me money. So he's seeing little children and everything go home. And he's like, dude, when I was a child, you know. Okay. I used to go home and eat popcorn and candy and the, the nice, I miss that. I miss that. Right. You know, but what I believe a song like that, that story, that perspective, being in the minds of other people, they learn to see homeless people as victims of circumstances, okay. not people who have chosen to be in a desolate position. Well put, well mm -hmm. put. Okay, so we're going to get into Vagabond. And once again, this is James Hatcher with our special guest, S. Cole Main. Uh, and you're tuning in to 106.5 WPPMLP Philadelphia. Okay, excellent, excellent song, uh, Mr. S. Comain. Thank you. All right, so uh, when promoting your music to the public arena, do you anticipate a specific kind of record recognition, or is your primary objective is to have your music to be in an addition to the archaic catalog of music that is continually in rotation in the realm of radio broadcasting without being a performing artist that is considered uh, in the forefront of public appearance? Well, generally when I write music, when I create it because of the nature of the music, how it directs itself, um, I never think about where it's going to be, um, how people will it will resonate with people. Um, all I could think 
and I hate to sound selfish. No, 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 I love to sound selfish. You know, I think about how do I appreciate what I'm doing. Right. But sometimes the message has to be heard. So with that in mind, the reason for that mindset is that my creative mind is not hindered or divided by considering what people that I haven't met yet are thinking. Okay, so you it, know what it, I mean. It, yeah. I'll, so it, there's no way to anticipate. I only want out of life when I'm worth. Right. So I don't want to. Oh, I just want them to be blown away. No, no, no. I want to say what I have to say. So it outweighs mm-hmm. the perspective of just having a special kind of recognition when you put out that message. It exactly. Within your music. That is exactly which, it. Which goes back to feeling more so that it is kind of a personal responsibility to get the message out not necessarily to cause like you know uh primarily um to change other people's perspective Mm -hmm. on how they view uh you know their surroundings or situations in life Mm -hmm. um which you know is the best way that we can express you know what's going on around us and you know uh the message within the music but it's um, is actually to, to, for me, it would be as an accomplishment first, which overrides me going out there performing uh, for that special kind of recognition. First, it starts with me having the ability to do it and then acknowledging that I have the ability to do it and then accomplishing it, which exactly. overrides that recognition. Exactly. But then once I recognize that I'm going to be recognized anyway and I'm going to have that special type of recognition because mm-hmm. I put that message out there, then it is a responsibility in a sense to be uh, presented, uh, present whatever I put out there in a way that it won't have that uh, domino effect, not only that domino effect, but that, you know, the 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 re, the re, you know response of exactly. what's going out. You know what I'm saying? So, um, okay, so is there any special work you enjoy that you do uh, financially um, that supports the products, uh, the projects that you are connected with uh, in your music and it also allows you to promote your music to the public, uh, such as personal small business, or are you comfortable as to work in employment for a specific established company or corporation? Um, or are you linked to both in order to, you know, have that uh, access to financially support you and mm-hmm. what you love to do, which is your music? Yes. Well, right now at the moment, I'm working with a company. I've, chose, I've chosen to work for this company okay. because of the environment. You know, it's colorful, double-decker buses. And right. Everybody's on vacation, all the customers, you know. But I think mindset is very important. What we do during the day for a job is very important because it greatly affects what we do in, art, in an artistic sense. Right. So by my environment being colorful, people are, you know, jubilant, cheerful. They're on vacation. It's like Christmas to them every day. Right. You know, and that's what makes it uplifting. Uh huh. And then by the colorful environment of this work, keeps my creative juices stimulated. You so know what I mean, so okay. And that type mm-hmm. of environment does it give you? Do you feel like it gives you a, a a good opportunity, a major opportunity to promote yourself uh, as far as what you do on uh, as far as like your creativity and your music? Do you incorporate that? Do you have a balance with that? Like if you're working for a specific company or corporation where you have a certain type of requirement of a a specific type Mm -hmm. of presentation because you're representing this particular company. Um, Do you see that you could, you know, incorporate part of the promotion of what you do personally? Well, I could do that. I could do that. Just my personal self, I choose not to use the workplace for that. Right. However, there's been times when I've been asked or things would come up just depending on. But I don't believe it's necessarily always imp- always appropriate, especially with sales. That's right. what I'm doing right now. So is there any recommendation that you can share with an artist uh, that may desire to make a transition from working a particular kind of employment uh, to be a full-time entertainer? Yes, there is a recommendation. Um, As an artist, you're only a product of what you do. So if you put a job before you, before your art, 
your job will be primary ex- expression wise and your art is going to be restrained it's going to be lacking okay do you know what I mean? So I really think it's important to uh, wake up with the music, think about it, bring it with you every day, on, you know, mentally. Right. You know, so sing a song in the morning. If you dance, dance or stretch in the morning. Well, you I know, feel like... Keep it, it, yeah. I feel like if you're an artist and a musician and you do have, like, that type of employ, uh, employment, mm-hmm. um, it's going to be with you anyway. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly, you know. And just in, and I mean, in the sense of expressing it when you can. If not, you've got to get another job. Yeah, you know you're gonna, I mean? yeah, yeah, really. you're gonna have a balance yeah. because, you know, mm-hmm. part of your motivation of staying at a particular job is to, you know, uh, is to support. Your, yeah, the to art. Pursue your exactly, goals. exactly. So what this means is, like for myself, with a full time job of nine hours, six days a week. So this means nine hours I'm working, one to five hours I'm playing an instrument. Right. So there is a consistency with it. Right. And yet the creative juices aren't hindered by that mental fatigue of the day because okay. the job is exciting. Do you right. know what I'm saying? So this is what I considered before getting that job, and I think it's important for musicians to do it. Now, before this, what I've done, I've done things like drumming for belly dance classes, Freedom Theater, and I've done colleges and you know okay. classes and shows and so many things. So I could you know make a living as a music teacher or different things like that okay you know which is interesting um to me that works well but this works just as well working for a company that allows me to free my mind okay because i'm not sinking all of my heart and spirit into something outside of my project right music is music but my project is my special music you know what i mean so okay so speaking of special mm -hmm. music would you like to introduce another track for us i would love to um this is uh this is one of the oldest tunes i have it is called parade a uh, parade is about someone who's uh feels lost we should say spiritually but without knowing what he needs so the person looks up in the eye you know, looks up in the skies and asks whoever can i join your parade it's a spiritual walk okay. is what parade is about. It's a spiritual walk. Someone who knows that they need a higher power and never gets the answer during the song, but at least you know, okay. he wakes up and reals, realizes that's what he needs so to do. So it's a story. So we're going to mm. get into a musical story. Pretty much. Okay. They're all musical stories. All yeah. right. So let's get into parade mm-hmm. uh, with ex Maine. And once again, you are listening to Food for Thought.
Okay. All right. So thanks for joining us, um, you know, in this radio special, Food for Thought. Uh, once again, I'm your host, James Hatcher, with the special guest, S. Main. All right. So, uh, S. Main, uh, is there any mantras or sayings that you may tell yourself to get you in a certain mood in order to write music? And if you do, do you write the song off the mantra or saying that you may tell yourself? That is a very interesting question. Um, there is a state of mind that I go into. There, there is a type of a preparation, uh, which that type of preparation is clearing my mind of any influences. Okay. Why? We need our influences because the influences, you can't shake them. Okay. You can't shake them. So I take three years, uh, I'm sorry, three days of listening to nothing but myself. Okay. You know, and I mean that in a very humble way. Okay. And uh, so nothing but myself, so that my personal influence, my personal sound is kind of, you know, magnified. I make sure I stay away from toxic mindsets, toxic people, okay. toxic situations. I watch the way I think. Quiet is a key. Okay. You know what I mean? Quiet right. is a key. Okay. And... I, I would say prayer, you know, if, if I do anything, I should remind myself to do it more. But yeah, it's, you know, prayer would be the, uh, I guess, the mantra or the saying. Okay. And I basically don't use it in songs, but yet more than yesterday, <laughs> one tune that I wrote did carry on that mindset throughout the recording. Okay. You All know right. what I mean? So sometimes it happens. Okay. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how effective do you consider an environment when it comes to the creativity of a self-proclaimed artist and what are the certain factors that may make an environment conducive to a successful production? Well, for myself, um, it's, uh, the environment is, is key. It's key because it does affect. Just as colors affect our moods, colors and situations affect our artistic expression as well. So for myself, this is why it has to be, you know, my favorite place to record is at home because at home that environment is quiet. Right. It's free of negative spirits, you know. Okay. Um, the colors and things that I'm familiar with, things that get my juices going, you know, the color okay. scheme and instruments on every wall and all around me, you know. Right. These are things that get my juices going, you okay. know what I mean? Yeah, so it's that all little right. intimate you know, situation. Okay, so with a little bit of a few minutes we have, I have a few more questions. Um, what is your perspective on the use of what some producers, as well as recording artists, know as AI or artificial intelligence as to either enhancing musical performances with voice makeovers and lookalikes of the performing artist, or do you, um, or um, do you potentially see that it may alter the impression of how music is expressed? Well, well, you know what, it does definitely alter the uh, perception of how music is expressed because uh, hearing it, I mean, I've heard you know some of these things, and um, the passion is not taken. You know, the passion is taken out of it. Right. So, how you do know, you find how would an uh, individual? Uh, artists or whether they are artists or not define um what is an ai or artificial intelligence when it comes to music like how how could they different differentiate what is organic uh compared to what somebody may use as an ai with all the types of you know effects we already been using uh with mm -hmm. music for the past a uh, long time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know people have been using synthesizers and you know, the voice alter, uh, altering uh, machinery, um, you know, um, as far as AI. So I think there's a vast uh, description when it comes to AI. I just think that, you know, now presently um, there's a lot of um, talk about, you know, a specific type of AI. And I think it's dealing with, you know, like the visual perception of the artist mm -hmm. uh, in a form of, you know, making that artist more animated. For what purpose? I really don't get into, but I'm very much aware of it. So, what it? Uh, what is your perspective on? Uh, do you feel like um, that's essential for the artist, or you know, more so, we should continue to lean on what is organic? Okay. Well, I, I would say we definitely need to lean on what is more organic. Now, in reality, I've heard so much. I've heard far less and seen and heard far less 
of the examples of the AI. Right. So now that you're mentioning movement, it would explain some of the uh, unusual movements I've seen with artists. Well, what that does to me is it, it, is it allows, to a degree, someone who is not incredibly gifted in a specific way right. to dazzle the viewer. Right. So what that does is kind of, eventually you, you, you're snuffing out the true talents. Do you know what I mean? Right. I, I think the record labels would be, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a brilliant thing to do. If I, you know, I had somebody who needed help, I would definitely hit a couple of buttons, you know, if necessary. Uh -huh. But there are too many people in the world. Right. What I think, I think it's best to just wait for the talent to show up, look for the talent. Um, I don't agree that it's necessary to make these type of devices. Right. There are some digital alterations that may be necessary. Okay. Like there may be auto tune. You mm -hmm. know, I haven't personally used it, but nonetheless, auto tune. Okay. There could be somebody very gifted, a gifted singer, a gifted composer, or who somebody, may go off sometimes. Right. Or you yeah. know, you might have an excellent writer. An excellent songwriter, but not be, you know, that mm -hmm. vocal is, exactly. or musically inclined. So that, you know, that, yeah. you know, in he, a sense may yeah. balance it out. Right. So do you consider that the use of AI or artificial intelligence may have a lasting position within the music production? Or do you feel uh, it may fade out um, due to the um, possible exaggeration of it? Okay. And, and let me tell you. I've got an answer, but that is the most difficult question. It's very interesting because I've thought about that myself. So it's kind of difficult to tell rather the audience, the listeners will become fed up okay. and want genuine music, you know. And I would say, and, and now that I'm mentioning it that way, I would say it, it would have to fade out. Right. It, 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 you know, and then again, another part of me is saying it, it may not because there's so much money involved in right. it. Right. They may even flood the market with it so much so that this is all people begin to know. Right. Okay. They'll assume that maybe this is how Michael Jackson or the other great artists did it in the past. Maybe they were robots too. Well, good. Do you know thing. what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's kind of hard to see where it's going to go. But I, 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 it's the music industry. I would assume that true artists would start to stand up. Right. Hopefully, the, the labels will hear this and, and remind look for ourselves that we exactly. are the creators of the artificial. We are. We are. Intelligence. We are. Yes, okay. We are. So. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, do you have one one more song you want to introduce? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is called Vampires. And <laughs> Vampires was written from the perspective as, you know, it, I should say a sarcastic response to, you know, myself wearing black, you know, and myself, you know, you know I'm a believer in God, I'm Christian, and so mm -hmm. forth. But they said, well, you wear black, you must be Satanist. And let me tell you what. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it was even worse. So much so, it inspired a song. So it's kind of a sarcastic response. Am I okay. a vampire? You know, it's like, am I this, that, or the third? You know, but it also somewhere in the, the uh, song denies all of the negative, you know, assumptions people wow, have it's about. Wow, yeah, it sounds like you might have right. people asking that about themselves. Oh. I don't know what people are thinking, you know. So, y'all are a double worse rested. Listen, I've never heard of a color-coded religion. And that, that was my response, you know. Okay. A different response every time. But you know vampires, I'm, I'm just gonna go with it, you know. Scare them up a little bit if they think I'm a vampire, you know. <laughs> All right, so okay, so we're gonna get into va mm -hmm. vampires. And once again, uh, thank you for tuning in. We hold the golden key. A key 
see that shows the heat from the riches they're in. So um, we're about to wrap it up. Uh, mm-hmm. It has been an honor to have you, Esco Maine. Um, so tell the listeners, uh, how can the listeners uh, and the viewers go about, um, you know, getting more uh, of your content uh, and listening to the wonderful, uh, authentic, original, uh, organic music that, um, you know, they may want to continue to listen to? Okay, well, X Colomain can be found on uh, YouTube as uh, X Colomain. That's X with a space, K O A M A N E. Also, uh, X Colomain could be found on Facebook, Samadhi, S A M A D H I, letter X, then the K O A M A N E, and uh, SoundCloud. But right now, we do, I do have music that is in production, so okay. there's, there's not much there. Within the next couple of months, music will begin to service from Mexico, Maine. So okay. you can look forward to that, and okay. you will find it on those sites. Anything else, I will reach out to the public and let them know where else the music will show up. Okay, mm-hmm. so we can find him on YouTube. Uh, make sure you check out the video, uh, The Storm. And uh, once again, my name is James Hatcher, and you're listening to another radio special episode of Food for Thought. 
for 106.5 FM. I would like to thank all the listeners and the viewers. You can uh, find me on YouTube. Just type in my name, James Hatcher. Um, you know, there's maybe other James Hatchers, but not like this one. So uh, you can find me on there. Type up Food for Thought, and it'll go right to my channel. Make sure you subscribe. Also, you can uh, find uh, me doing a lot of things with the community uh, through Facebook. Uh, once again, uh, thank you, and everybody take care of yourselves.